I'm going to answer a few questions. So Anand says, hello, John. Sorry to ask right away. I was following along with last session's recording and having trouble getting the index.html.erb to load in the browser. Uh, it says that there's a 400 error. So what I would do the first, when you get an error like that, the first thing to do is look in your Rails log, which is that bottom panel in code spaces, and it'll say more about what's actually happening. So if you can take that and put it in the chat, um, in like the Zoom, in the Slack chat or something, we can help you. Um, we can help you do more. Um, Anand has put it here. It is an SSL error. So I'm guessing what's happening here is that you are, um, is this locally or is this on code spaces? If it's local, then you're going to HTTPS colon slash slash when you should not have the S part on it. Um, and if it's on code spaces, it might have something to do with the, the outage that's happening currently. Anonymous attendee says, can you use logical operators to filter the tables? Uh, you can't, you have to use the database operators. So you can use where, and inside of where you can use logical operators. And I can, I can show that in a, in a bit. I think I showed it on a previous lesson where I compared age using um, greater than. So you can do age greater than 24 and filter a table based on that. So you can use logical operators like that. There will also see in the future ways to be able to pass certain pieces of data into uh, into where. Manon says, whenever we do a model.where, it returns an active record relation, which you can't do any model methods on. Yep, I'm going to definitely be talking about that today as part of reviewing the homework. Uh, Manon says, why don't we get the same data type when we do model that first? Yes, very important point. I know a lot of people have been caught by this, so I will be definitely spending some time talking about that. Um, again, for anyone coming in late here, having an issue uh, with a 400 from the server and you're using code spaces, it's likely due to, there's um, there seems to be a code space outage right now. Um, this is kind of like what you get with beta software is that sometimes there are outages. So it'll be back and things should be working soon. Uh, we might not end up using code spaces in today's lecture, um, which I realize will be problematic for some people because you're following along, uh, but, We'll, we'll do our best in the meantime. And if it comes up, then we'll start using it. Cool. Um, yeah, Luis, if, if that comes up, um, I'm not going to go too far into it because I, I don't. I, I tried to cancel exercise three, but if you're into it, you have to pass a URL argument as well. So do messages.new and then also the URL uh, to the URL that it should be at. Um, okay, so let me see. Let's see what happens if I try to do this. I've never done this before, so let's. See what happens. Okay. Is everyone seeing a big screen? Okay. Cool. Um, and then see some code, hopefully. Okay, so this is gonna be just like the code space for now. The top here is gonna be my code, and then the bottom is my Rails server, which is currently running. Okay, so this will be our, our temporary uh, thing that is like code spaces. So we're gonna start by jumping into the exercise like we always do. Um, and to jump into the exercise, First, we'll, we'll read the note. It says, this is an incredibly involved exercise, but you can do it. Uh, again, I want to apologize for exercise three, which I think I think I just taught too much um, last Thursday. So we, we're definitely going to get there. We just have to kind of take a couple steps back. So today, instead of getting into forms, we're going to spend some time, some time talking about um, how views work in Rails in general. OK, so for exercise one, it says, create two models. 
um, you want a chat model and the message model, which belongs to a chat. A chat has multiple messages. So that kind of indicates that in the second part, we'll probably want a has many from chat to message. And feel free to drop questions as I'm going through this. Yes, redacted exercise, the exercise that we shall not name. So I'm going to relish generate a model called chat. And that's going to create a couple files, but the most important one is this db migrate file. So let's open that up. Okay, now it says here that a chat has a name. Okay, so the way that we create a name, we do t.string name. Um, for the most part, I've been removing this timestamps part, so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove it, and then we just save. Okay, are there any questions about this migration file before I keep going? It's just a simple migration, which describes a table called chats, which has one field called name, which is a string. Uh, Alakon says, how does Ruby know about singular plural nouns? Um, like if I do belongs to messages, it knows that I'm talking about message. Yep. Uh, so Ruby is, uh, sorry, it's Rails that's doing that, but Rails has what's called an inflector that basically can convert between singular and plural nouns. Um, Andrew says in the chat, you're typing some weird characters, i.e. W colon. Uh, ignore anything on that line. It's part of my editor. This is an editor called Vim. Um, and it's just, this is what I code in normally. So you can kind of just ignore anything down here. Um, it's just part of how you use the editor. So in Vim, um, instead of clicking around, everything is via the keyboard. So when I move around here, I'm actually typing J and K to move between the lines. Um, okay, so we're gonna save this migration. And then remember we run it with Rails db migrate. Okay. And we've also created by doing that this chat model, which is just empty. So it's a class called chat that inherits from application record. This hopefully is familiar to everyone at this point. Now we're going to go do Rails generate. And remember, we can write Rails G if we want a model called message. So same kind of thing. I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna remove that timestamp field. I'm gonna put t.string body. And remember what we're gonna do is we're gonna do t.integer chat ID. Okay, so remember a chat has many messages. So you can think of it like this in your head, there's a chat and there's a couple messages sitting off to the side. The chat has many messages. So each message has to have an ID on it to tell it what chat it belongs to. Because remember a message only belongs to one chat. Okay, is this clear? Great. So we have messages, chat, ID, and a body. Uh, Joe, we're not using code space today because um, it seems like there's an outage on code spaces. So we're just using a regular editor, but you can, for the most part, it's exactly the same. It's just the top here is my editor and the bottom part is my Rails server. So things will be a little different looking today, uh, but they, they're this, they work the same. Okay, so then we're gonna run Rails DB migrate, which is going to run the migration. So now we have a table called messages and we wanna go into the models and we wanna say that a chat has many messages and that a message belongs to chat. These two things go together. A message belongs to chat and a chat has many messages. So one is the inverse of another. So if we look at this graph again, we're saying that chat has many messages and that a message belongs to one chat. Okay. 
So now we've done this. That's basically exercise one, what we've done so far. Okay, exercise two is we want to create a controller which responds to a given route slash chats slash chat name and displays the list of messages for the current chat. Okay, so when someone says create a controller, where do things start? Things start in, remember, config slash routes. That's that routes file that we keep looking at. This is what mine looks like because it's got a bunch of stuff from old exercises. We're going to add a new thing, get. Uh, chat slash chat name. Is that, is that what it said to do? Chats slash chat name. The controller, I'm going to call chats. And the action, I'm going to call index. Um, you could call this anything, but I'm going to call mine index. Okay. And now that I've defined controller, let me make this bigger. Now that I've defined controller chats and I have action index, the next thing I have to do is I have to create a controller. So let's exit this. Rails G controller chats. I get a bunch of files, but the important one is this one. So let's open it up. And now remember in our routes file, we did controller chats action index. So we need to make a corresponding method called index. Now we could do the rest of the problem right now, but what do I like to do instead often is verify that we've got the route hooked up correctly. So to do that, I'm gonna do this render plane I'm going to write something inside of there. And we're just going to verify that even we can get to the right place. So if I go to slash chats, oh no, I got an error. Uh, right, it's supposed to be slash chats, slash uh, the name of the chat. This is good. We got a controller, we got a route that points to that controller and it's rendering correctly when we go to the right URL, slash chats, slash books. The reason that chest slash chats, slash books goes to this place is because we have a route that's slash chats, slash anything. Okay, so what's the next piece? The next piece is to make sure that we can get this chat name variable into our controller. And we do that via params. So I'm going to do params of chat name. And so that we have a variable, I'm going to say chat name equals params of chat name. Okay, so this is a piece that comes off the URL, and I'm just going to put it into a variable so that we can use it. And then just to make sure that's working correctly, we are on chat name. We'll save that. So now I've successfully validated that I um, am able to, to get this piece of the URL, the books piece of this URL, and I'm able to get it into my view, or sorry, into my controller. Okay. Now the next part of the instructions though, is create a controller which responds to a given route and displays the list of messages for the current chat. Okay, so let's start by going into our console, which we do with Rails console. And in here, uh, I will check code spaces in a minute. And if it's back up for me, then um, I'll switch. Chat.create, and we want the name we books, and now we've created that chat object. Okay, now I'm going to put a message into the chat. So we'll get a handle on chat by doing chat equals chat dot first. We can run chat to make sure that that's the real object that we have. And then remember what we do, chat dot messages dot create. 
and you pass a body. So now what I've done is I've inserted a new row into the messages table and it's returned to me that new message. So our next task should be, how do we get this message displaying on this page? Um, Andrew, when you call chat.new, uh, that calls initialize, okay? I'm gonna, I'll recap real quick. So when you uh, call chat.new, that's essentially the same thing uh, if you imagine how the new method is implemented, it's implemented like this. Object, allocate memory, this is how new essentially is implemented. So when you call chat.new, what it does is it allocates the memory and then it calls that object's initialize method, and then it returns the object. So when you're creating a new version of something, the method you define on it to be the constructor is called initialize, but the actual way you create one is with chat.new. Okay, so let's go into our controller and we're gonna try to hook this thing up. We'll get the chat. First, we wanna get a handle on the correct chat. So we can do chat.where name chat name okay now a lot of people got confused by this and the reason that it is confusing is because people left the code like this so let's just output um let's output here what chat is equal to into the server is not started let's output the chat into our browser Okay, now look what we got. We got a chat active record relation, okay? Now, when you see active record relation, what I want you to think about is the active record relation is essentially an array. And that makes sense because imagine um, you're reading this line. So it says chat dot where name is chat name. Um, now imagine that spreadsheet that we keep talking about, the spreadsheet with all of the rows, right? Um, in this case, there's a row of all of the chats. Uh, let's say that I handed you a, 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 that, that spreadsheet just as a human. And I said, hey, can you look, for, look through this list for all of the um, places where chat name is books? Okay. Now, there might be multiple entries where, where the chat name is books. So the thing that you would hand back to me is actually a list of all of the places where the chat name is books. Um, even though for the most part, we're only going to have, um, and we can actually enforce this too, we're only going to have one chat by a given name, it technically is possible that there could be two chat objects with the same name. So the reason you get back an array is because where returns a collection of things, essentially an array. Um, where will always return an array because um, when you say something like, Remember we were talking about the other day where we had a, we had contacts um, or people. We did people that create name eight, uh, age 34. We did people dot, or sorry, person dot create name John, age 34. And then we did people dot where age 34. This has to return Kate and John. So that's like an array of objects. Yeah, um, Sewell, so we can, we can actually make it have a unique name, but even in the case where we have it uh, be a unique name, it's still going to return an array of objects because um, Rails doesn't know that we've made the name unique. All it knows is that you're asking, uh, you're asking a question where, and when you ask a question where, the thing you get back is always an array-like object. Okay, so when you do uh, where dot first, that's saying where this thing is true, and give me the first place that it's true. There's actually another way to write this, uh, which I'll show you 
that will maybe make it a little bit clearer. You could write chat dot find by name chat name. So find is just like where, except it will it will return the first place that that thing is true. So these two lines are actually the same. So you have where and you have find by. Okay, so either of these is fine. Um, but the first one is the one I taught you. And I think it is um, important to know that where, where always returns an array-like object. Is everyone getting the, the where first? If you don't get it, put it, put a question in the chat and I'll spend some more time on it. So now I'm gonna render this. And when I render it, you'll see this chat followed by a bunch of weird characters. And that's because now the thing I'm getting is one chat, not a list of chats, but one chat. Okay, Eric, um, to spend a, a little bit more time um, on this. So when you have where, where is gonna return an array or a thing that is like an array. So, and the reason for that is because um, when you say where, this potentially can return multiple things. So it can return for age 34, it can return Kate and John, right? And by saying first, you're saying, listen, like I know you're gonna return multiple things, but I know as the developer that the question I'm asking you is always gonna return an array of only one element. Meaning like, I know that chats can have the same name, I get it, but like, I only care about the first one of a given name. So you do dot first to basically say, you're gonna give me back multiple records, but I don't even care if there's multiple, I just want the first one. And that's what we're doing here. Um, and the reason that the output is now different is because now chat, instead of containing an array, otherwise known as an active record relation, it, chain, it contains one object, which is a chat instance. Okay, so that chat instance we can call, we could call chat.name if we wanted to. So I can actually change this to chat.name. And if I refresh, you'll get the same output as before. Okay, so now the last part of the exercise here is that we're supposed to output that list of messages. So we actually already have the list of messages because the messages is just chat.messages. So I can put that into a local variable called messages. And then if I want to output it, I can do something like say uh, message, uh, message bodies is equal to messages.map message, message.body. So now this is an array of just the body, all the bodies of the messages. So currently this is an array. The value currently will be an array that just contains hello world. Okay, so if I wanted to output that array, that's gonna be real easy. I can just do message bodies and I can actually just output it like that. So if I refresh the page, you're gonna see that array, just an array that contains the one message we've put in. And actually, if we go down here, we open the console again, we do chat.first.messages.create body goodbye world, I create that, I refresh the page, uh, server running, I refresh the page, and now we've got two messages there. Um, so our race says why message dot body instead of message square brace of body. I actually think you can use you can use either, but the reason is because um, this is the it's less characters first off, and second off it is going to call a method called body. It's just, it's easier to write this, I think is, is, the, is the real answer. Okay. Okay, so Joe Cardozo, 
uh, says, what if we have two chat names with the same name? As the developer, we need to know which one we're calling out. Yeah, um, so there's, there's two answers to this. First one is that um, there are ways to make it so that there are not two of the same chat name. For example, um, the chat name is going to get created by the user, right? So before you're creating one, you can just check in the database to see if there's one that already has that name. And if there is, don't create a new one. So you as the developer are in charge of the behavior to be able to find the chat, but you're also in charge of how the chat gets created. So you just make sure that there aren't more than one of them. Uh, so first is, first is typically only used when you're saying like, I know that I'm getting back an array that only contains one thing. And I wanna turn that array of one thing into just the one thing by itself so that I can have it. In this case, I wanna turn an array that contains a list of chats, or sorry, a list of only one chat into just the, the chat object itself. Akil says, why do we use chat name instead of just name? Uh, chat name comes from the routes file. So chat name is when you want to reference a param, that param has to match up with the name that we're using on the routes file. Could be anything. We could write uh, slash chat slash colon, I don't know, thing or whatever, and then do params of thing in the controller. Okay, now this works, um, but really what I was hoping uh, that people would do here is that they would render these using a Rails view. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time doing that. And remember the way that we do that is first we delete the render, the render plane and we refresh the page. Now there's gonna be an error. And the error says that chat's controller index is missing a template and in order to fix that, we have to create a template. We're going to create an app views chats index.html.erb. Remember, this is always the same app slash views. This is the name of the controller, chats. And this directory was created for us when we did rels generate controller chats. This is the name of the action, index. And then this is always the same, .html.erb. Okay. So I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to give me a new empty file just to make sure things are working. I'll write hello world and we'll refresh and we can see that now it's it's visible to us. And this annoying thing is here. Um, but what I really want you to take away from the fact that that annoying thing is there is that uh, the page we're looking at is not a plain text page. It's actually HTML now. So we got nice looking font. We have this cool little thing that is in our way. Um, and I can I can write HTML in here. So we'll we'll talk more about HTML today, but I can do any kind of HTML things that I would like in here. Then I need a way to get the data from the controller into that HTML page. Does anyone remember how I do that? Yep, the way, the way to get it in is via an instance variable. So first thing we have to do is, I'm gonna put it on messages. So I'll do at messages equals chat.messages. By putting that at sign before it, I've created an, a normal Ruby instance variable, just like all the ones that we've seen before. Um, but what's neat about that is that the instance variable is actually um, accessible from inside the view. So if I change my code and I write it like this, now I can refresh the page and there is my collection again. Okay. And then we learned a couple of ways to write inside the view. And one of them was uh, to remove the equal sign and do messages.each. So we use these less than percent basically means run this code, but don't output the result. So we don't want to output the result of end. We don't want to output the result, the result of messages.each. 
and then we can put something inside of here. So I'll write hello. You see the output is hello world, which is this part here, and then two hellos. This one represents hello world, and this one represents goodbye world. So then we can just get rid of the hello and replace it with message.body. And if I refresh that, you'll see hello world and goodbye world. So this data here, the messages is coming from the controller. And now it's in the view. And by using this special less than percent equals format, we're able to run Ruby code and have it output whatever's inside of there. Uh, Sewell, that is, that's totally fine and, uh, and good. Um, we haven't taught HTML yet, but we will today a little bit. Okay, so that's the exercise. That's uh, exercise one and two. If people are interested in seeing me do exercise three, I can do it um, after the class, but I'm not gonna do it now because it seems like a lot of people uh, were confused by it. And also um, I'm gonna go in a different direction. Okay, do people wanna drop questions about this exercise and then um, we'll see if code spaces is up in the meantime. Okay, so question from Kevin is, where did you put the instance of less than percent equals message body? So the file is this file here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in the views directory. Then it's in the chats folder, which is the same name as the chats controller. And then it's in index.html.erb. So this is the name of the action and then followed by .html.erb. Uh, our live attendees are currently at 80, which is a great number. Um, it has, I think it was 85 or 86. I haven't ever written down here, um, but it's good. It's not, not, a, not a big drop. I would expect that the amount of people we're losing week over week is actually gonna go down. Like it'll get, we'll lose less people. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to code spaces. And to do that, I have to gracefully exit this thing. So I'm just going to commit this change so I can have it in code spaces. And let me switch my share. Um, so now I have this, and because uh, I pushed over there, I will have to now pull from here, which I have to figure out how to do. So now if I go in here, controllers, okay. Uh oh, now my syntax highlighting is broken. Okay, uh, I'm gonna keep answering questions. Um, Kevin says, where else is that? I see it in the views, but where does the views get it from? Yeah, that's a good question. So just like there's implicit return, what I want you to imagine is that right here, it says render index. That's actually what's happening. So um, at the bottom of every view, you can write it if you want to. Just imagine it says render and then the name of the action. That's how it gets wired up. So what Rails has internally has some code where it says, hey, if I get to the end of an action and nothing has been rendered yet, then just take the name of the action and render that. So that's how it's actually able to make the jump um, automatically to the name of the view. I hope I answered your question, Kevin. Oh, I see, Kevin says, uh, I got it, at messages equals chat dot messages. Yep, that's how you get it. Uh, so any instance variables that start with an at sign will be available inside the view. Cool. All right, we have a lot. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. Um, there's first, I want to make sure that I captured all my points from 
uh, from this exercise. Oh, another thing I saw a lot of people do. So I want to I want to talk about this real quick. I saw a lot of people in their views. So if you're in the views directory and chats in here, they would do something like uh, chat dot uh, where name is chat name dot first dot messages dot each. And you can do this. This is accessing the model layer directly from the view. But it's really good practice to think about things with the MVC architecture that the way that the, the view should not be going to the model directly, it should be going to the controller only. So the controller is kind of the thing that stitches together the model, which has all the database logic, and the view, which has all the presentation or how you what it looks like logic. Okay, so try not to when you can. Um, Basically, if you ever use like a capital class name like this in a in a view, that's probably a sign that whatever that is should actually be in the controller. Okay, so I'm going to be spending some time today uh, going through views, and I'm going to uh, we're going to make sure that we really understand uh, this. Yes, find by is also acceptable. I covered that a little earlier. Uh, we're going to make sure we really understand this, um, the views and how these tags work and how you use them. So the first thing you'll need in the view is you need the ability to be able to output something. So when you want to output something, you'll use this. It's an ERB tag for outputting. So it's less than percent equals. And what it does is it evaluates Ruby code that is inside of this block, inside between these two tags. So but anything between here is going to be Ruby code. So I can do something like time.now. And if I save that, and I'm going to start my server now. Uh, what? I think the code space is still having some trouble. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yep. Okay. I think we switched back a little too soon. Okay. I'm going to go back. To, I'm going to go back to my editor. Bear with me here. That's fun. Okay, I think we're, we're just gonna end up here for the rest of today's class. So hopefully that's okay with everyone. Okay. Views. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this inside of the, the home view so we, can, so we can see it. We'll go back to our home page. I'm gonna delete the form because we're not doing that yet. I'm gonna delete everything. Okay, so when I do less than percent equals and then I output something and I refresh the page, you're gonna see that that thing shows. So hopefully this, this demonstrates to you what's happening, which is that anything outside of these blocks is not Ruby code. They're just regular text. And then everything inside the block is Ruby code. So in this Ruby code, you can do anything you want. You can do chat.count. You're gonna see it, it's in there, don't worry. Um, so you can output anything you want. Does this make sense? This is Ruby code inside of less than percent equals. We'll run that Ruby code and then it's going to output whatever that thing equals. So when you do chat.count equals, right now that's gonna output the one, which is right here. Um, I try to see if I can turn off this, uh, this stupid thing. I don't know why they would by default put this in the top left hand corner. That's like the exact space where, anyway, I'll leave it. Okay, 
So when you sometimes want to be able to run code in the view and not output something. So when you want to not output something, but you still want to be able to run Ruby code, you will put a less than percent and no equal sign. So the equal sign is the thing that makes it so that it outputs. So if I run this now, it's only going to output hello, goodbye. I'm going to So it's only going to output hello, goodbye. Okay. So equals outputs, no equals does not output. The only time that you really ever want to, ah, that is very helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Um, the only time that you ever really want to be able to run something and not output is when sometimes in your view, it's important to be able to create a variable and put something into it. So if you wanted to do something like this, uh, let's say you're going to use that over and over again, right? So you want to say something like the count is a chat count count, and that is the count that is chat count. Okay, so if I run that, I might sometimes, this is the case where I want to do it. I want to sometimes be able to create a variable and be able to use that in multiple places. So that's really the only case where you ever are going to use the less than percent. Um, there's one other place where you use it, and we're going to cover that next. So let's just run this to make sure that we're all on the same page about how that works. You can create local variables inside of these. Now, you wouldn't want an equal sign because if you had an equal sign here, what would happen? It would output the variable because remember, the equal sign is going to output anything that's inside of it. Okay. The other common case where you don't want to use an equal sign is when you're iterating over something. So imagine you have an array and you wanted to do something real simple. So inside of here, I just want to um, output the value. And then I'll put a break tag, a BR tag, to go to the next line. So let's just run that. And you're going to see hello and goodbye. Now, what I did not do, what I did not do is put an equal sign here. OK? Because if I had put an equal sign, what would happen? it would output hello, goodbye, and then it would output the array. And the reason that that happens is because, re remember, the equal sign makes it output whatever's on that line. And the return value of the each method, which is what's on this line, is the array. So what we're seeing here is that it's doing the thing we want, but then it's outputting something extra. So if you see something and you don't want it outputting on the page, just delete the equal sign. And then it won't output on the page. Cool. Okay. Now we're going to spend some time going through. We're not going to really cover HTML right now, but we are going to be doing some basic HTML. Um, and we're going to be using that basic HTML to build up a more complicated views. So the easiest thing that you need to be able to do in HTML is probably this. This is a what's called an HTML tag. Um, HTML tag is anything that starts with a less than sign and ends with a great, uh, greater than sign. So technically, these are the format of an HTML tag, but they are not HTML. So I realize that that's a little confusing, but this is an HTML tag. My editor is highlighting it in blue. And what these are, um, this one is a BR tag. And BR stands for break. And what a break tag does <clears throat> is it takes the thing inside of it and it puts it to the next line. 
So you can see here, hello, and then it goes to the next line using the break tag and then goodbye. So if you were doing something like outputting the messages like we were doing previously, you might want to use a break tag to separate the messages from each other. Okay. So a break tag is just like a new line character or hitting enter on a keyboard inside of a text document. A break tag takes the content on one line and then puts the rest of the content on the next line. So if this break tag were not here and we saved, you're going to see that they go next to each other. This is just how HTML works. It's like you can put things on different lines. You can, if we if we right click here, you can even see. Uh, this is the way the page looks. One, that thing, hello, goodbye. They're all on different lines, but that doesn't matter. In HTML, it'll collapse them all together. So you have to use the break tag to separate things. Um, the next tag that I have to teach you is a div tag. Um, a div tag. Yeah, we're, we're slowing it down a little bit. A div tag is uh, the most fundamental tag in HTML. And the way I want you to think about a div tag is that it is a box that goes around a piece of content. Okay, so if I refresh again, it's going to look the same as before. Actually, I'm going to click this inspector in my browser, and you'll see these div tags are around here. And watch what happens when I hover over them. You'll see that it highlights the entire line. And the reason it's doing that is because it's showing the entire area that the div takes up. So I want you to imagine when there's a div tag, there's technically like a very invisible box that goes around that piece of content. So we have one box that has hello in it, and then we have one box that has goodbye in it. And notice we didn't, we don't have the break tags anymore. We don't need the break tags anymore because now these things are in boxes. So those boxes take up space. And so that has the effect of putting things on different lines. So there's one box here and there's one box here. You can see them. Make sense, div tags? Every web page you go to is just built up of a bunch of div tags. I think div basically divides the content. Okay. I'm gonna teach you a couple other basic HTML tags. So one of them is the h1 tag. If I have an h1 tag, you have an opening h1 tag, and then a closing h1 tag, just like div. Div starts with div, and then ends with slash div. This is the same thing. Starts with h1, and ends with slash h, slash h1. If I save this, you're going to see this. And the reason you see that is because h1 stands for header one. So it's just a big, uh, bold version of the regular text. So for example, on our chats, we might use this to be the name of the chat. And then underneath it, we could have a list of messages. So even with these kind of few uh, building blocks, we could go back to our chats page. All right, I have to use chats index. We could say, uh, welcome, welcome to the uh, chat.name chat. And then down here, we could take each of our messages and we could wrap it in a div tag. And then because we don't have this, at, remember we don't have at chat defined, we'll have to go back to our controller change chat to at chat. So now it's available inside of our view. And then if we refresh this page, oh, I meant to put this part inside of a H1. You 
now we have this. Welcome to Books Chat, and each of our messages is on different lines. So HTML is the way that we are going to make our content have structure. Because without HTML, everything's kind of just all next to each other. And nothing can, you can't have links, you can't have images. HTML is the way that we're going to be able to have what looks like a web page. Different size fonts, images, colors. Okay, it is uh, five fifty-five ish. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start our break now. This is a ten minute break. I will not be covering new content for the next ten minutes, but I will answer all the questions that you want. Um, I realize that we are kind of slowing down a little bit. The reason we're slowing down, um, there, that it might feel like we're slowing down, is because um, some of you might already be familiar with HTML. Totally understand that, but the people that are in the class that are not familiar with HTML, this is still a lot of content. So we have to spend some time introducing these core concepts so that everyone um, is on the same page about what we're talking about. Um, HTML can seem simple, but there, it can also be, you've got to think back to the first time you learned it. It's pretty confusing actually, having these like weird tags that mark things up. So if anyone has questions about um, any kind of HTML or has, has uh, questions about content that I've talked about already in the class, uh, you can feel free. Um, for anyone just joining now, we covered the homework from yesterday. Uh, we covered an introduction to Rails views, um, and now we are going through some things you can do in views, which also includes a basic introduction to HTML. Um, Kevin says, so you want to have multiple pages in the application, you would need separate views slash HTML file for each page. Yep, that's correct. So each controller action is paired with a view file. That view file has to be in the folder, which is named the same as the controller. So in the case of the chats controller, remember the folder is called app views chats, and it has to have the same name as whatever the action is. Manon says, do you remember what tags do over time? I always have to look them up because how rarely I use HTML. Uh, yes, you will. You will remember them over time. Um, and I guess on top of that, I should also say that like the it, you, there in the modern internet is less need to remember what all of them do because for the most part, only a subset of them are used. Div is used more than anything else. And I would actually say that like div and link, um, if you had just those two things, you could build pretty much everything else on the internet using just CSS, which is something we're gonna learn in the future. Um, so just focus on the couple that you need, div, link. Those are, those are kind of the ones. And also uh, we're gonna see in a moment how even with Rails, you don't need to even know link. You don't need to remember it. So the days of having to remember all of the HTML are over. Uh, Julie J says, can you repeat what you said about separating model controller and view and how the view file, you should not have the model name, i.e. capital chat. Um, I do have something like chat.all.each to show all the chat rooms. Yes, okay, Julie, if you are doing something like that, so there's this model view controller, right, you have the model, so our database, then you have the controller, which is deciding how what what to get from the database, like how how to actually call the model methods, and then there's the view, and this framework is supposed to enforce some kind of isolation of concerns. So if the view asks the model for something, that in this architecture is technically uh, not correct because the way that it should work is that the view should ask the controller to ask the model. It seems like a very minor difference, which it is. Um, 
but it is an important way to keeping your applications maintainable, maintainable. So if you're doing something like chat.all, the way that you probably should approach that instead is that you wanna have a chats instance variable inside of your chats controller that's equal to chat.all and then use that instance variable instead. And what's nice about that is that if you wanna go make a change and maybe only show some of the, the chats that you can make that change in your controller and not have to change your view at all. Paul Senior says, advice for someone a few lessons behind and has difficulty understanding the harder homework questions. Um, so the Slack group is a good resource. There's also study, study groups um, that are happening. Um, and I think also just like going through the, the sessions multiple times, I think has been helping people, at least I hope, I hope that it's helping people. So what I would say is like, go back to the first one that is confusing to you and uh, spend some time with it until you get the exercises. And if you have questions, um, ask them in Slack, you can email me, you can ask them in the questions repo, um, or you can join a study group. Uh, could you please explain what .erb stands for? Um, when I type less than percent in code spaces, it doesn't automatically close it for me. Uh, it will only close it for you if you, uh, mine doesn't automatically close, I don't think either. Um, and I think ERB, I don't even know what it stands for. Let's embedded Ruby. So it's a specific format for embedding Ruby code inside of another file, in this case, HTML. So the reason it's .html.erb is you're embedding Ruby in HTML. What happens under the, under the hood, so to speak, is um, this file gets parsed by Ruby and it looks for all of these places where it's less than percent equals and it runs the Ruby and then it substitutes this part, this entire part for whatever the answer is. So that's all that happens is it's HTML except with these little snippets of Ruby inside of it. Any other questions? Got a couple minutes here. I'm happy to talk about anything, any any uh, topics that people are maybe a little fuzzy on. I can spend some time going over. Sure, I'll explain div again. So what a div is, is a box. And there's this handy feature in uh, most web browsers where when you right click on something and you click inspect, you can kind of move your mouse around here on the right hand side. So this is our HTML. Remember we wrote the H1 tag and then we wrote a div tag and another div tag. So a div is that blue, that blue box. So when you write div around something, that's what it's actually doing is it's creating essentially an invisible box around the content. Um, and you might be wondering now, like why would I want a div? And that's gonna make more sense when we get into CSS, um, which is a way to kind of style and make things look even, even nicer. You can change the fonts, you can change the colors and sizes of things. Um, but for now, what you need to know is that this is a box. And because it's a box, if we didn't have the box, goodbye would be up here next to hello world. Um, but it's not because they're technically each inside of this like invisible, box. So a div is just, you put it around a piece of content and it puts it in an invisible box. Uh, Shearing, you cannot have, uh, you cannot have a side-by-side -side div tag. There, there are ways to get that behavior with CSS, which we'll talk about when we get to CSS. Uh, but a div by itself is it can never be side by side. It is always, um, it's always the full width of the page. Manon says, "How do you delete a model?" Um, so you would want to. You can just delete the the model file. That'll that'll be perfectly fine. 
Um, if you wanted to go a little bit more intense with it, what you could do is um, make a migration to drop the table, uh, which you can look up. You can look up how to do that. Uh, anonymous attendee says, "How do we proceed with something?" doubts when we have our questions unanswered on the repo Slack channel and have issues understanding something by own. Uh, if you have something that you're not understanding and no one is answering you on the Slack channel, please just like message me a link to it. I, I try to see everything. I really, I do my best to try to see everything, but sometimes I miss something. It's not, I'm not ignoring you, I'm not like trying to um, ignore your questions. Just message me on Slack. My handle is C John Run, S E E J O H N R U N. Uh, and just give me a link to the thing. So, like a link to the thread on Slack, and I'll go there and help you out. Um, similarly, if you have a question on a repo that is not answered, just message me and I'll, I'll answer it for you. Our race says, why is HTML not fully separated from backend? Like writing form an HTML file with form tags, ID attributes, and then somehow linking the information with the backend. I'm confused by the blurred lines between backend and frontend. Um, I don't think it's much of a blurred line. There's a views folder that contains a view. And then inside of that, you can use some Ruby. So it's really up to the developer. I guess this is what you mean by blurred lines. It's up to the developer um, to decide how much uh, Ruby they want to do in here, which is why sometimes it might be a little confusing because technically you can do anything. You can do chat, chat.count or something. So it's really just about you um, deciding for yourself how pure you want to be. You can technically uh, interact with the model directly in here. Andrew says, is there an easy way to create a new instance of Rails? Um, yeah, the easiest way uh, to do that is to uh, create a folder and you can go into the folder and you can do rails new dot or another way you can do it is you can actually just do rails new and then uh, name of app and what it'll do is it'll create a subfolder for you um, that'll have the rails app inside of it. Uh, Rosa says, so Rails allows you to code with Ruby and HTML. Does it allow you to work with JavaScript? Yes, it does. And we're going to see that later. Um, Dash says, how do you connect view files with the controller? Home view works fine, but chat's not registering changes. Uh, the view file is registered by the, uh, to the controller just by naming convention. So in here, we have a controller called chats. We have a con controller called chats with an action called index. And our view, you can see here, is an app views, and then chats, because it's the controller chats, and then index the name. So make sure that your controller name is lining up with the directory that the view is in, and that your action name, which is the method inside the controller, is the same as the file that is representing your view. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. A couple other tags in addition to the H1, there's an H2. Um, an H2 is just a little bit smaller. There's an H3. It's just a little bit smaller. There is a bold, which is strong. And every time we talk about bold, you got to talk about underline. So underline is EM, which stands for emphasis, EM. Now we're going to get into a somewhat large topic, which is links. 
So first I'm gonna show you how to write a link in HTML. And then we're gonna instantly forget that and never do it again. But it's important to see what a link looks like. So a link is an A tag. Okay, A stands for anchor. Anchor, so A tag like this. And then we have this annoying thing, which is href, href. Again, you do not have to remember this because I'm going to teach you how to never have to think about it again. Then you have the place that you want the link to go. Then you have the thing that you want to represent the link. This is what a link looks like on the internet. Anchor tag, href is the place that it goes to. And then between it is the text that you actually would click. So if I refresh the page, you're gonna now see this Google link. And if I click it, I'm on Google. So if you ever wondered how links work on the internet, this is it. It is an anchor tag, which lets you go from one piece of content to another piece of content. Now in Rails, because we have Rails, uh, we can write that same thing Yes. Uh, sorry, I always forget. So we can write it like this. So Rails has a method that's available to you. This method is called link to, and it takes two arguments. The first argument is the thing inside the link. And the second argument is where it should go to. So if I refresh again, now you'll see two links. One is supplied by the anchor tag that we wrote, and the other is supplied by our link to helper. So if you click it, it does the same thing. Okay, so now you never have to remember anchor tag, you never have to remember href, you don't have to remember any of that. Someone asks, are they, uh, so Andrew says, do they look the same? And yeah, they look the same. The only difference is the S and that's because I didn't type them exactly the same, but yes, they do the exact same thing. Uh, Johnny, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, no, the HTTPS is not always needed. Um, it depends, most sites, if you go to it without the S, it'll just redirect you to the version with the S. Julie J says, do developers still use anchor tags over link to in Rails? No, and I'm gonna show you exactly why in a minute, and it's going to convince you to never use them again. Okay, so in Rails, you can actually imagine on this line, if I wrote home page instead of Google, right, then I could write this. I could write HTTP colon slash slash uh, localhost 3000, right? Because that's that's what my URL is here. So for you, for Codespaces, it's going to be something different. It's going to be like blah, 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 dot Codespaces dot something. And I can uh, make a link to the home page. So now I click that, it will go to that home page that we made. Okay, but in Rails, I can actually, with the link to helper, I can instead write root. I'm gonna refresh it. Now look, I didn't have to write anything about localhost anything. I didn't have to write anything about anything at all. All I had to say was go to the root page. And remember root is that same word that we used here. So when you're saying is, I want to link to the homepage and I want to refer to it by the name that I've given it, root instead. And when you do that, what Rails does is it says, okay, I know the second thing, this is the link tag. So I'm supposed to use a URL here. So it takes this and then it looks up which route is the root route. And then it reverse looks up the URL and it places that on the page instead. So if I inspect this, you'll actually see that it's a href to slash, which is the root.
Uh, so Julie J says, is root preferred over slash? The answer is absolutely. And the reason might not be clear now, but it will be in a second. Um, the reason is basically that instead of having knowledge all over the place, that slash is the same as root, we can refer to it by the name root and then everywhere the name will be that thing. I'm gonna explain in just a minute. Um, I'm, I'm like getting there, but I'm gonna explain just in a minute why. Um, no, it's not too many questions, please. Um, please keep asking questions. Uh, Sula says, can we use root path? Yes, you can. So there's, um, you can also write this like this. And that's actually, when you write colon root, that's what this does, root path. So same thing. Okay. okay, now check this out though. I'm gonna go to the cars line on line eight and I'm gonna add an extra piece to it. I'm gonna write as cars. And then I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna say cars link. Uh, I'll put it in addition to this. I'll put uh, cars page and the second argument, I'll put colon cars. Now I'm gonna refresh. Oh, broke it. I broke it. Oh, I broke it. Um, I think change. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I think I have other routes that are confused. Oh, there other routes that are confusing things. So let me um, let me just make a new one instead, so that we can uh, so that we can use it. So we'll do get slash hello. We'll send to the controller home and the action hello, and we'll do as hello. Uh, in order to make that work, I will need a controller action called hello. And we'll just make that render plain hello. Okay, so now if I go if I go to that, you'll see slash hello is what have I done? This is why it's good to create new apps so you don't can consistently can confuse yourself. Get hello. Oh, what have I done? Um, okay, phew. Okay, so this is our hello action here. Okay, now if I go back to that view, I can change this to be hello page and I can make the second argument be colon hello. When I do that, look what happens. I inspect this and we'll see over here on the right-hand side that it's taken the hello symbol and it's looked up the route. Now it says slash hello. And Julia J, getting back to your question of why, now watch this, I'm gonna change my route. So all of a sudden it says hello dash world. I'm gonna refresh the page and look what happens it automatically fixes my link to point at the new place. So by referring to links by their name, instead of referring to links by their actual direct path, I get this behavior where essentially Rails can never break a link. Does this make sense to people? If I try to pass something here instead of hello, I pass H-L-L-O, now I've made a typo. And on a typical web page, things are gonna break. Watch what happens in Rails, it errors. Now, this is really cool that it errors because it's saying undefined method hello path. It's basically telling me that I tried to construct a link to something that doesn't exist. So you get the ability to never break a link again without knowing about it. It's a, it's a huge, huge deal for for um, for routing for building websites that are that are that you can manage. Um, this is a big deal.
Okay. Andrew says you have to create a symbol something for each link then. Uh, for now, given everything I've, I've said so far, you do, but I'm going to show you in a minute how you don't have to do that. Um, Luis, yes, that is. Um, so the as hello is the thing that is linking the symbol hello to my link that has the same name. So if we just use that symbol hello to reference it everywhere, then we'll never break a link because Rails will tell us if we create a link to something that doesn't exist. So we can never make a link to something that doesn't exist. So we might, we might potentially break a link to some external thing, like to google.com might break, but within the website, it won't be possible anymore. You're essentially creating this name, this as name, and you're saying, okay, everywhere in my app that I want to talk about that path, hello world, I'm going to refer to it by this name. What you get in response is you never break a link. And if you ever want to change slash hello world to something else more user-friendly or different, you can just change it and nothing will care. Okay. And uh, I think one of the questions that I got there was why, um, so we have to do as hello. It seems like that's gonna get pretty annoying to have to do that over and over again. Um, all the way since is if you wanna do get chats too. Uh, so if you had something like uh, get hello world to, uh, you know, home hello. If you want to use it here, you can just do the same thing. You just put as hello at the end. So it's the same. Okay. So it's going to be annoying to have to write that as on every line. It's not that bad, but there's there's actually a more structured way um, that Rails can do it. So there's um, when we're writing code in, in Rails, a lot of times uh, we refer to this thing being on the rails. And what's meant by being on the rails is that if you follow the rails methodology of creating an app, if you do all the things that are normal for rails apps, it becomes very, very, very easy to use. Things come together really quickly. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of that now with a thing called resources. So, um, and if this this is this is a good example of something that might not make a ton of sense right now, um, but you know it's going to click later. Um, so I'm going to spend some time creating a a resource. So we have our models. What what models do we have? We have the person model and the rest. We're going to use the restaurant model. So hopefully people remember the restaurant model. The restaurant has many reviews. There's really nothing in here. It's just a restaurant and it's reviews. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my controller. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go to my, I'm going to make a restaurants controller. Okay. So the way I'll do that is I'll do rails G controller restaurant, just like all the other ones that we did. And now I can open that restaurant controller. And remember, we always create a route for the controller. So let's create that root route. I wanna create a route that lists all the restaurants. So we'll do slash restaurants, controller, restaurants, action, index. Okay. Now I should be able to go uh, to restaurants. It's gonna error because I don't have a template yet. So it's gonna tell me that I think. Uh, oh, uninitialized constant restaurants controller. It's because I typed it wrong. Okay, and now it's going to error. Oh, what have I done? Ah, I created the wrong file. No one stopped me. 
So th what happened here is I created restaurant controller, but I actually wanted restaurants controller. So okay. We're going to create that index route. And inside of it, we're just going to call render plane OK so that we know that things are working correctly. Now I'm going to remove the render plane. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is so I'm going to go create the view. So it's going to be restaurants slash index.html.erb. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, restaurant, um, sorry, at restaurants. Uh, I talk a lot when I'm coding all the time. Dot restaurant, like that. And then here we'll just create a div for each one restaurant.name. Okay, we broke it. Undermine method each. Ah, right, because we haven't defined at restaurants yet. So that's easy. We'll just do restaurants equals restaurant.all. Right, so we're setting an instance variable, which is from the controller and now accessible inside the view. You see nothing outputs. And I'm guessing that's because we don't have any restaurants in our database. So let's go to the Rails console. And uh, let's look at restaurant.count, restaurant.count, zero. So we'll create one, restaurant to create, name, house. Okay. okay, now I have to show you how to create a link to a page of a restaurant. So right now we have this index page that lists all of the, uh, the restaurants. Uh, let's let's just go create another actually. So just while we're oh console D, let's create another restaurant. Um, okay. So now we have two restaurants here. Now imagine we wanted to link each of these to a page that would describe the individual restaurant. How would we do that? Well, first let's create a page to describe the individual restaurant. So we're normally in Rails or in any web app, really, we call that the show page. And we'll have to create a route for it, just like the other one. We'll do slash restaurants slash uh, restaurant ID. Uh, it will go to the controller restaurants and the action show. So remember the same controller, except now there's another method called show. Is everyone following? We're creating another route. This one has a param inside of it and it is for an individual restaurant. Okay, so what that will be is something like slash restaurants slash owls. So in here, we'll have to say, okay, I want at restaurant to equal, uh, remember this is the same kind of code we were writing before, the restaurant where the name is the, sorry, the ID, uh, maybe we should call this restaurant, yeah, restaurant ID. So we want to find the restaurant where the ID is whatever ID was passed in. And remember, we have to do first. Okay, so this would be like slash restaurants slash one, because remember, it's the ID. Okay, now we can implement app views restaurants show.html.erb, so another template, but this one is for the show endpoint. And we can write something inside of it. So now we have hello. We'll write hello from, and remember we have the restaurant already here. So we can do hello from restaurant.name and put an exclamation point after it. Hello from Alice. Okay, so now we have two routes. We have one that is the restaurants index route that shows all of the restaurants. And then we have a second one that is the restaurants show route, which is this one that shows the information about an individual restaurant. And if we wanted to link back, here's what we do. Uh, we'll make a link that says all restaurants. 
we'll link to chat or sorry to restaurants and then we'll go down to our route and we'll add as restaurants so that's what we just learned we learned that you can have a page and if you want to link to another one you can click this this should all make sense now we're back here now how do i link from these Okay, I'm gonna show you how to link from these. So let's open up the view, app views, restaurants, index. I'm gonna create a little space here just to make it a little easier to read. Okay, now remember, we wanna to link to, the name will be the first argument because that's what we want to be the thing you actually click. And then the second argument will have to be the place that we go to. So for now, I'm just going to put google.com so that we can verify that things are working correctly. So now we've got these two, and they both go to Google. Now, we don't want it to go to Google. We want it to go to our restaurant. So we could do the thing that you've probably used to before this, and we could do slash restaurants slash restaurant ID. The problem with that is that if we ever change this part down here in the routes file, the restaurant slash, that it would break all of our links. But if we do this, it, it works. It technically works. Okay. A better way to do it is to add that as that we were talking about. So we'll do it as, and in this case, we'll call it uh, restaurant. Okay. And that is the equivalent of writing restaurant path of restaurant. So this is the same way that before we were able to write cars path or we're able to write restaurants path. Remember this view, app views, root path, exactly. All of those things where we did underscore path. This is just like that, except we're passing in a restaurant and what we're getting by passing in a restaurant is now it knows which one to include in the link so if i refresh this you'll see that these still work so now we've got the benefit of these special helpers that rails gives us we can't break any links again but we can do it now for individual items as well Um, Luis says, is it possible to substitute that by colon restaurant? And the answer is no, um, because if you did, if you, oh, I see, I see what you might be saying. Are you saying uh, if we did this, we can't because um, we need to be able to put the restaurant local variable in somehow. And when we use a symbol, we won't have anywhere to put it in because symbols can't take arguments. So we have to use this restaurant path version. There's actually an even better way, which I am going to show now. And again, if this confuses you, we're going to we're going to be keeping doing this over and over again. So it's not about learning it right now. It's about um, it's about getting it in your head, and then we'll learn it uh, fully over you know the next couple of days. Okay. So these it turns out this pattern, these two lines that we wrote. This is a very common thing to do. Commonly, you want to be able to have an index page for something and then a show page for something. Think about like every single website you've ever been to. There's like a list of things. <clears throat> then you can click into an individual one and you can see more information about that one, right? Everyone has seen that. Okay, so in Rails, you can actually change this and you can write resources restaurants. And if I delete these two lines, so I'm going to comment them out for now and refresh the page. Everything, or this base page still works. Um,
broken something. Um, ah, I see. This base page still works. Uh, we have to make one modification, which is instead of this being called restaurant ID here, it should just be called ID. But if we're willing to make that change, then Rails will give us the entire behavior that we want. So just to, to drive that home, this these two lines that have all of this giant behavior in it is the same as this line. We, we get even more. This actually gives us a whole CRUD operation. So this, when you write resources, you're technically getting the thing to show all of the restaurants. You're getting the thing to show one restaurant. You're getting a thing to update an individual restaurant. You're getting a thing to delete an individual restaurant. So you get all of that just by writing resources. And there's, there's more which we'll cover, but this is the, the kind of key point of it. So now I've just written resources and I get all that behavior. And we have to go one step further, which is that if you're opting into using resources, you can actually take this restaurant path part and you can delete it. So that's you know, the exact same code as it was before. So check out what this line is doing. It's a link to call where the value inside the link is the name of the restaurant and the place that it is going to, we just pass a restaurant object. And what Rails does is it says, okay, you passed me an object. I know that that object is a restaurant object. So I'm gonna look for a resource called restaurants. And if I find one, then I'm going to direct you to the show endpoint of that resource. So just by doing this, because we're using resources, we essentially can link to the object restaurant and it'll automatically do the right thing. So this is really cool because it means that now we don't even need to know the name of our routes anymore. We can just pass objects and uh, Rails will route to the correct place. This is as far as I'm gonna go um, in this class, I think, with resources. So you can, you can do more uh, reading on this if you'd like to, but this is gonna give you enough pieces to do all the things you need. And that is that you can do an individual route, you can make a route, and that you can also make a bunch of routes um, at once that have names. So now you have the tools to be able to create one with as at the end, like we did before for the hello route, remember this one? Or you can use resources. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take questions for a little bit and then I'm gonna show one more piece of HTML and then I'm gonna introduce the exercise. Okay, so uh, Rubina says, so we have to define methods named index and show. Yes, if you're using resources, you'll have to define the methods with those names. So resources specifically, um, I want you to, like when you think of resources, think of it as these lines. This is literally what it does. So you say resources, it says, oh, I'm gonna create a bunch of routes for you. And I already am gonna fill in a bunch of the details for them because they are, most definitely what you want, because this is such a common pattern in web development. So it's like, I'm gonna create a route. I'm gonna call it slash restaurants. It's gonna be for the restaurants controller. The action name is gonna be index. And I will set up this as for you automatically. Uh, another question is from Andrew is, will it also make the route for post? And the answer is absolutely. It will, it'll automatically, uh, another one that creates here when you use this is it will do, um, Restaurants, controller, restaurants, action, create as uh, restaurants. So that will automatically set up uh, to the create method. So don't worry if you don't understand that part. Honestly, don't worry if you don't understand resources at all because uh, we're gonna cover them again and we're gonna come back to it. 
it's also not part of the homework. So um, Luis says, how does it identify to use show instead of index? So if it's about an individual item, then it will use show. And if it is, so if it's like slash restaurants slash one, that's about an individual item. And if it's just slash restaurants, then it knows that there is no item because there is no slash anything uh, and it will use index. Remember, it is just a shorthand for this. So it works the exact same way as if you wrote all of these things. Oluwason says, uh, I am lost. Is this the resource? Um, I think you asked that question before I introduced the resource, but if you have a particular question, let me know. Julie J says, are there developers who don't use resources? What would be the reasons? Uh, no. I mean, for the most part, re resources do everything that you would want as a developer. So there might be cases where you have like one-off actions like these that don't use resources. That's okay. Um, but every route that you introduce to a Rails app, even if it's not a resource, is going to have this as part at the end. It would be very, very strange to have a Rails app that does not um, use the router to build the URLs, meaning you should never be writing the URLs. The URLs are this part here, the slash, slash hello world. You should never, ever, ever be writing those things by yourself. So Rails will do all of that work for you. Julie J says, singular means show. Uh, yep, singular is show. Okay, so just to sum up a couple of things that we learned, we learned uh, the important things that we learned are how to use ERB, how to iterate in ERB, output things in ERB, um, how to not output things in ERB if we want to. We learned how to create routes, in particular ones that have as at the end, and as essentially to be able to create a named route between uh, two things in Rails. So we learned how to create them, and we also learned how to use them. And then we learned how to use resources to create a bunch of those routes that are definitely like um, duplicative just by using a single line like this, resources. Um, so that's a lot. I think everything hopefully is not too crazy except this resources part and really the resources part uh, is going to come to you over time, and I'll, I'll keep I'll keep reinforcing it when we when we get into it over and over again. Uh, in addition, we learned the div tag, HTML uh, tag. We learned H1, H2, strong M um, for different parts of HTML, and we learned how to create links in Rails. So we're going to learn one more thing. Um, so when you want to create an image in, in uh, HTML, you use a special tag. The tag looks like this. Uh, if I have, let's say I had an image, you got a link to an image somewhere. So if I had an image, oh, wow, that's a long. Give me one second to get an image. Okay, it's img src equals and then the URL. And if I put that, it's gonna have this, I don't know, heart that says I love you that I just found on the internet. Okay, so this is another thing where like, you shouldn't have to remember this crazy HTML thing. So what you remember instead is that Rails has a helper called image tag um, that takes in the URL and does it for you. So if you ever want to output an image, use the image tag helper. And as you can probably imagine, um, there is there's a reason why you'd want to use image tag over the regular HTML tag. And I will probably be showing that uh, on a future lesson. Okay. I am going to spend a little bit of time answering questions and then uh, and then we'll get to the homework. 
Uh, Felipe says, what does div stand for? I mean, M stands for emphasis. What does div stand for? I'm not sure offhand. I think it is division, uh, div tag meaning. Um, divider maybe. Yeah, okay, defines a division. I think division. I'm gonna go for division. Um, but after a while, you'll forget division. You'll just you'll just think of it as div. Div is just the the thing that divides a HTML page into multiple sections. Okay. The next question, Ravina says, does the where clause generate a restaurant object? Yes. So when you do restaurant dot where ID of params dot first, you will get back a object which is an instance of the restaurant class. Rosa says, I'm understanding resources as a box of methods you can use to summon what's needed. That's exactly right. Uh, resources, I'm telling you, is just a method that all it does is call these things here. So you can even imagine if you were to implement resources, all it's gonna do is take these, it's gonna call them, Right, and then it gets in the name, right? Because we take in name. You can imagine how to implement it, and that's all that resources is. It's just a, um, it's just a method that calls these other methods. So there's nothing special about it. Andrew says, if you have time, can you create a new concept similar to restaurants or cars and walk through creating a controller? DB migrate, but with resources this time. Uh, yes, I will do that right after I answer a couple more questions. Uh, Rafi says, has, how do you add an alt attribute in the code for images? Um, I talk a lot about like the way that, like when you start getting into Rails and Ruby, that you can kind of just, you can just, you can just assume that something might work and that it will. Um, so kind of the, the thing that you might think would work is this, and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Um, so that's how you can get the alt tag. So we can verify that in here if you want with the inspector. See, alt equals thing. So it's just like, uh, you're gonna get into this, this habit of just like, you'll find that eventually you're writing code that you've never even looked up and uh, it just works because Rails and Ruby are very, uh, they follow certain patterns that make it consistent. Hollow Basin says, can you please explain what we did with the controller path for the link to? Yes. When you um, want to link to a restaurant, you will use this helper like this. Um, this is a method uh, that all this method does is they're defined for you when you create an as route. And all this method is, is if you imagine it in Rails, uh, the way it's actually implemented, it looks like this. It says def uh, restaurant path restaurant. And all it does is it goes like this and it goes uh, restaurant slash restaurant dot ID. So this is a method that you get for free because you wrote as you get this restaurant path method. So I hope that makes sense. There's a, a method that is created for you that takes in a restaurant and returns the, the full URL. You get this for free. This gets made for you anytime that you use as. So anytime you use as, you get this for free. And like I was saying before, uh, resources, because resources technically is just these three lines, they use as. So you create a route, it uses as, and you get this rent restaurant path restaurant method for free. Um, and then when I showed you this, it's just a shorthand. These are the same. Um, so if you only remember one, the important one is to remember is this one actually. So just remember, you get a, anytime you use as, you get a method that is named the name of the as underscore path and that it takes in a restaurant, which returns the URL for that thing. I hope that makes sense. 
Uh, we can talk more about it if it doesn't. Um, Rubina says the URL restaurant slash ID takes in one argument at runtime. How did you have it print both restaurant names? Well, in the in the index view, which is up here at the top, you'll see that I actually have restaurants.each. And I'm going through each of the restaurants. And for each one, I'm creating a separate div and putting a separate link inside. So if we were to go look at the markup um, and I inspect this piece, you're going to see that it's actually a div with one anchor tag inside of it, and then another div with another anchor tag inside of it. So they're they're totally separate. Okay, now I'm going to do uh, what Andrew asked for. I'm going to create a new concept similar to restaurants or cars, and I'm going to walk through creating a controller, DB migrate, or with the resources. Okay. Um, I will create a model Rails G model instrument that's going to create uh, a migration. And in here, I'm going to have the name of an instrument. And I'm going to have the family of the instrument. And then I'm going to use Rails DB migrate to run the migration. Now, I'm also going to generate a controller. This one I'm going to name instruments with an S. And I'm going to go to the config slash routes. I'm going to put resources instruments. Okay. Now by doing resources instruments, I automatically can go to slash instruments. And when I do that, it says, hey, the action index can't be found. And that's because we haven't implemented it yet. So let's open up the instruments controller. It's here. And we'll just add the action index. And I'm going to write render plain OK. Now it works. So notice how we didn't do any like big thing in here. All we did was resources instruments. All we did is, hey, say, create a bunch of routes for us that are about instruments. Now in here, I'm going to delete the render line. Because I deleted the render line, I'm going to have to create an instruments slash index.html.erb. And I can put something in there. So I'll do that. Now it says hello. OK. And in here, I will do, uh, I'm going to create an instance variable in the controller called instruments. I'm going to set it equal to instrument.all. And then up here, I'm going to go instruments.each, do instrument. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say uh, instrument.name is a member of the instrument.family family. And I'm going to put that in a div so that if I have multiple instruments, they don't clobber each other and sit on top of each other. OK, so nothing outputs. I'm also up here. I'll, we'll change this to the H2 instruments. Okay, So there's nothing in the list. We could even, if we wanted to, we could write if instruments is empty. We could write, there are no instruments. Uh, instruments. There are no instruments. Now we're going to go to the console. We're going to do instrument.create. I'm going to say the name is the uh, alto sax and the family is woodwind. The name, uh, we have the barry sax and the family is woodwind. We have the cello, I'm seeing some cello, cello fans, and the family is strings. Now, if you refresh this, you're going to see my three lines. Oh, I see my three lines. So now imagine I wanted to, instead of putting all of this information here right now, 
I wanted to just name the instruments instead. And then on a separate page, I wanted to say all the details about the instrument. Well, let's do it. So the first modification I'll make is I'll take all the extra information away. Refresh that. And now I have just my couple of things. I want to be able to create a link. So with a link, I will do link to instrument.name, instrument path, instrument. Okay. So I've got a link where the thing inside the link is the name. And the place it goes to is the instrument path of that current instrument. So if I refresh again, you're going to see now that these are links. And if I hover over them, you'll see that the path says slash instruments slash one. So I can actually click into them. And what does it say? It says the action show cannot be found for instruments controller. So now I know I need to add a show action. Remember, these are defined by resources. So resources defines slash instruments that goes to index. And it defines slash instruments slash ID, which goes to show. So inside of show, I'll do the same thing. I'll do render plain OK. Hey, look, it works. And then when it works, I can now delete that. And I can create a show view. So that's going to be app views instruments show.html.erb. Now I'm in the show view. And I want to be able to put something in here. So in here, I'll put, I want to be able to write something like instrument.name in an H2. And then I want to be able to write something like uh, uh, instrument.name is in the instrument.family family. Uh, put that in a div. And then we will also, just for good measure, link to all instruments, which remember is going to look like that. And we'll use the double quotes so we don't confuse anyone. So this is all the instruments. So if I refresh now, I'm going to get an error. The error says undefined method name for no class. And the reason is because I'm using this at instrument thing, but I haven't actually defined it anywhere. So we need to be able to define instrument down here. An instrument where ID is params of ID dot first. Because remember, when we use resources, the name of the variable sorry, the name of the param. Remember, we've, we've created all different ones because resources always calls it ID. So where ID is that ID dot first. And now if we refresh, we're gonna see the Altisax page, Altisax in the Woodwind family, all instruments. Yep, I created a back button right here. Come on, so cool. We just created this entire directory of instruments with links and everything that is powered by a database that can't break. Like there, nothing can go wrong with it because it's um, the cross links are managed by the by the framework itself. Okay, Kevin says resource, resources are powerful. I like you how you had us understand how they work. Yes. Um, I appreciate that you that you said that and that you that you mentioned that because I very much am trying to do things like that on purpose. I want you to understand what built people up to create resources, and then I want you to understand how to use them. The same way that when before I introduced how to use the database, I went through what a database is and how it's structured and showed you some SQL statements. You're not gonna a lot of times we we hide concepts and we say, oh, you don't need to understand the underlying thing. I I completely disagree. I actually think that like it's okay to say, oh, you don't need to know all of the details of the underlying thing, but saying, oh, don't worry about that at all is just misleading people. It's going to make it harder for them when something goes wrong. So I want you to be able to see what happens and then diagnose it, which is also why I do things like maybe don't define an instrument, show you what the error looks like, and then show you how I fix it. Um, Julia J says, if you need something like at chat variable that points to a specific chat instance in one more than one action, is there uh, somewhere you can put it? Yep, I'm gonna show that tomorrow. They're called before actions. So if you wanna read ahead, um, you can read ahead. Uh, Olawason says, so resources allow the ID as a subpath. Yes, they define, um, I'm gonna show it one more time here. 
they define one of the routes that resources define is a get to instruments slash ID. And the controller is instruments and the action show and the as is instrument. So when one of the things that gets defined, and this is the one for the show endpoint, it's slash instruments slash colon ID. And this will always be colon ID. It, when you use resources, you'll always have colon ID. The controller name is that. The action name will always be show. And as instrument will always be as the single version of this name, because um, that is how you refer to it when you do instrument path. Next question. Um, uh, so I'm not going to cover scaffolds. Uh, I think that they are, um, there's a thing called scaffolds. They, they sometimes can be a crutch for new developers, but they they hide too much of what's actually happening. Um, I think they're just confusing. So I don't, I won't teach them. Um, application developers don't use scaffolds. They, uh, they're just good for, I guess, first time Rails developers, if um, the instructor is into them or something, I don't know. You don't use them in real, in real engineering, like real day-to-day -day work. Uh, Felipe says, is it possible and advisable to use Ruby with WordPress to build websites? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, I think, I think you can. I think you could also just define your own blog model and then make, um, that's probably the more common approach is that you would define your own blog model with the fields that you need on it and just build your own website with Ruby. Um, then you're in control of all the pieces. So I'd say they're probably independent for the most part. Um, if you're using WordPress, you're not using Ruby. If you're using Ruby, not WordPress, because WordPress is also implemented in PHP, which is a different programming language. Okay, I'm gonna go through this week's exercise. This is session nine exercises. Um, exercise one is if you didn't, uh, if you didn't on session eight, render your messages list using a view and HTML. So a lot of people used render plain and then a message, which is completely fine, but I want you to, to go to the next step. And I want you to put the uh, messages into an instance variable and then render it with HTML. Exercise two is I want you to use divs and maybe some headers and things like that to space them out a bit. And then exercise three is I want you to create a new page that is a chat directory page. You can use resources if you want to, or you can use regular routes. That page should list out all of your chats. Each of the things in the list should be a link to that chat. And I want you to use link to to create those links. So any questions about this homework, uh, feel free to ask them now, but I, th I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, and we will be having a guest tomorrow, just as a note. So um, I don't know. I don't know what you would do to prepare for that, but we're going to have one. So any questions about this? Any questions about anything I covered today? Any questions about anything else? Um, you can ask them, and I will do my absolute best um, to try to answer them. Yeah, Joel, I think that's interesting. Some things can be a black box, but when you, um, I think like you lose a lot of developers when you, you kind of keep going to people and saying like, oh, don't worry about that. Oh, don't worry about that. Oh, like that's like some weird database stuff. Don't look at that. Cause then the first time that they're not in the class or the first time you're not showing them exactly what to do and they get a little bit lost, they can't reason about why the thing works the way that it is. So it's important to show you um, that really what's happening in Rails when you call one of those uh, route helpers, for example, like restaurant path, um, I show you what's happening so that you can um, be able to diagnose what, when something is wrong. I also want you to understand why it's important to do that. Like Julie was asking the questions about, um, about why not just use the path directly. Hopefully now everyone on this entire call is, is bought into the fact that um, the Rails approach to generating the routes is uh, better, more error-proof, um, and it is better in practically every every way than just using routes. So, 
Um, it's not something I think, like it's hard to describe without seeing uh, how valuable it is. So Eric says, uh, can we do the redacted exercise from yesterday now? I'm super curious. Yes, we can. I'll do it in a second. Um, Paula Wason says, please answer this question uh, again. If you need something like at chat variable that points to a specific chat instance and more than one action, um, yes. The um, thing is called before action, uh, before underscore action. I will be talking about it tomorrow, so I don't want to um, I don't want to throw more stuff at you right now, but if you're interested to look at it, it's before underscore action. So that's before underscore action. Um, and yeah, it seems like there's interest in in me talking about the the form. So I will I will go through the form now. But if anyone has questions um, about today's lesson, feel free to ask them. And uh, if you do. This might be confusing. If you're not getting the form thing, just it's fine. Don't get upset. It's 100% fine. Um, uh, Felipe, no, you're, you're totally good. Thank you for the message. Hopefully you can get caught up with the recording. Alice says, today was rough for me. Wasn't sure I'd be able to focus at all. Clean more than I expected. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll try, I'll try my best to keep it, to keep it easy. Um, that's what I'm, that's what we're doing, that's the, the hope. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do the form. And as an added bonus, I'm gonna show you how to do it with, uh, with resources. So again, if, you, um, if you're following the official version of this class, you do not need to know this thing because in the official version, I have, <laughs> I have undone showing the forms. So I'm gonna to go to the instruments index page. And here I'm going to create a form for, I'm going to write instrument.new do f. And now inside of here, I'm inside of the form tag. So I can do f.text field name. Um, and just for, for fun, I'm going to write placeholder name. Now I'm going to show you what that does in the browser. sign here. Okay, so now I've got a name field here. Uh, of course, I want to do the exact same thing for family, except it's just called family and the placeholder says family. Uh, we also learned about divs, so I may as well wrap these each in a div. Uh, and what that's going to do is give them some space. I'm going to put a div and an f.submit. Okay. Okay. So yesterday I had you implement a post, um, a post in your routes file, but now we have resources. And I told you before that resources technically implements the post call for you. So I'm going to type in here. I'm going to type trombone. I'm going to type brass. And I click create. And look what happens. It says the action create could not be found on an instruments controller. So like it knows that the form sent it to a certain place. It has already defined a route at that place that is a post route that already is mapped into an action, which is gonna be called create. So now all we have to do is go over to our instruments controller and do def create. Okay. Now we need to get the name, which is params of instrument of name. And we need to get the family, which is params of instrument of family. And then inside of here, we'll do instrument.create, which takes the name and takes the family. That'll create our instrument. And then we actually, when you call create, you get back the instrument. So I've put it into a local variable. And just for a fun other thing that we'll do, we'll do uh, redirect to instrument path instrument. So this 
is the same type of helper that we were using in the views before. We can actually use it from the controller too. And this is just saying redirect to the newly created instrument. Boop. Come on, it's so cool. So it redirects to the newly created instrument. It's got ID for, you can click all instruments and we can do it again and again and again. So here we can do trumpet. Uh, that's also a brass instrument. Great. Boop. Boop indeed. So <clears throat> hopefully that showed you one, how to do the exercise, but two, uh, how resources can be used to automatically define the create route and how redirect can be used to use the instrument path helper that we get for free by using resources to uh, redirect to the newly created instrument. Okay, Eric says, can, oh, I just did. Uh, Olawason says, can we do it? I did. Uh, will code spaces be up for use anytime soon? I'm not sure, but I hope so. Um, I'm sure it will be back soon. I'm sure people are looking at it. Uh, you will get access to code spaces again. Julie J says, params of instrument of name. Is this like params instrument of name? Yes, they're the same. So you can access hashes that, you can access the params hash in particular using either strings or symbols. So it's, it's probably better to use symbols, but they both work. Uh, Ilya says, code space is still down. How can we submit the exercise? Uh, I, would just, I would just wait if you can. Uh, hopefully it'll be back soon. It seems like it's kind of in and out and they're, um, they should be working on it. Paula Basin says, what's the alternative for instrument path when you want a name or family instead of the ID? Uh, I'm not going to show that, but if you're interested in it, look up the two underscore param, T-O underscore param. Uh, but I, I'm not going to show it in the class. So I'm not, um, there are there are places that I, that I won't go just because I don't want to confuse people. Um, but um, I'm trying to do, uh, in, in programming, we talk about depth and breadth. So depth is like how deep you go into something and breadth is how far across you go. Um, so I'm trying to go deep and not wide. Uh, I'm trying to bring you all the way through a topic so you understand it the whole way through so that you can go replicate the same thing. But there are just so many places you can go. You know, I'm showing you the most common things you're going to need to build an app. Um, but realistically, uh, there are so many other things that you can do. So if you're interested in something like um, how do I put maybe the, uh, so that it says trumpet up here. Um, I can direct you in the in the way to go research it, but I can't cover it in the class just because we only have um, we only have 16 days. Uh, Andrew says redirect happens when you click submit, and yes, so when you click submit um, as part of the submit action, it does the create, and then right after creating, it does a redirect. So it's not you don't get the redirect um, automatically we implemented the redirect using this redirect to method. Um, and Ernest says, can you delete an instrument with the resource? Yes, you can. And the way that you can do it is if you're in here, um, you could implement, uh, if you implement a link, uh, I'm gonna show it. Um, I'm probably gonna regret showing it, but if you're in here and you have a link and it's to, delete and it's instrument path instrument. So normally this as written would just go back to the instrument. If you put method delete on the end, I spelled something wrong, right? Instrument at instrument. So if you put method delete on the end, when you click this, it'll go to the destroy action. And then you can go implement destroy however you want. So that's another thing that's created for you with the call to resources. I hope that helps you. I'm not going to show the rest of it. Uh, Joe says, what's the breakdown for the remaining classes? Yeah, I was actually writing this down in my notebook earlier today. So, um, so technically, um, technically, we've exhausted all the time that we have for Rails, but I don't think that we can actually 
be done because there's just so much other stuff that we have to talk about with Rails. Um, I'm thinking we're going to have two more days of Rails. We're going to have one day of CSS, and then we're going to have two to three days of JavaScript, and then we're going to have a conclusion day. So um, we're roughly in line with the original schedule, but things are going to be changing a little bit because we need more time on Rails. <clears throat> really, Rails is more important for, for building a useful web app than JavaScript is. For the most part, JavaScript is just used for a couple of things, which I'll definitely be able to cover, um, the most important of which is called AJAX. So we'll be showing that at some point. Uh, Julie J says, instead of redirect, would it be inaccurate to render after submitting the form and create? Um, I don't want to go too deep into this, but I'll tell you what why you why you would not want to do that is because if you render in the call to create, then if the user refreshes the page, they'll create another instrument. So what we do is we redirect to get them away from the place where they could refresh the page and mistakenly create another. Essentially, the the redirect makes it so that when they refresh, they're re, they're refreshing the show page, not the create page. Okay, I think I am out of questions. Um, this has been really fun. So tomorrow, what we're gonna cover, we're gonna cover before actions a little bit. We're gonna cover probably the remaining pieces of what we need uh, for Rails to be able to move on. And then we're gonna keep on, keep on going. So uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, yeah, sure, one, one more, please. I will, I'll wait around for, you know, keep asking them, go ahead. Thanks, everyone. Um, all the way, so I'll, I'll sit here and I'll wait for your question. When creating form four, can you talk about the link with the symbol for your controller? Yeah, so um, when you're doing here, you have this form four. That is the same as saying saying that, uh, and I can try to try to demonstrate that's the same. Hopefully, okay. so these two are the same. So when you do form four and you want to use a symbol. The problem is when you use a symbol, the symbol doesn't know what URL the form should be submitting things to. Um, when you use this convenient little format, it's actually using the Rails route helpers to basically fill in the details for you. So it will automatically create this instrument, which is, um, I can show you what instrument does, and then a URL, which is where the form actually submits to. Uh, the instrument, the first part of that, the symbol, Here's what it's used for. Look, look at the name of this field. The name is instrument square brace of name. So the first piece of this is the, the symbol part is just specifying the first part of this name. It's like uh, creating a sub object inside of the form. Okay, so it's a lot easier just to use this because it'll handle all the details for you. That sub object, by the way, is the reason why in here we're doing params of instrument of name instead of just params of name. It's because we need to get into the sub object. So these two are the same. You can use either one you want, but if you, um, if you tried, for example, using just this, it won't work because it doesn't know where it's supposed to send the form to. There's no, there's no URL. It's just the symbol. So when you use one like this, it'll, I can, I can even show you. Let's say I inspect this, look. Um, oh, actually, this is working because we're using resources, but um, uh, in, the, in the example you showed yesterday, in the example that I showed yesterday, uh, it would not work. So I hope that makes sense.
um, the right way to do it is is this what I've written here form for instrument dot new. Um, and I guess if you're using resources, you can technically also just write form for instrument. That should work too. Uh, but that'll only work if you're using resources. Otherwise, you'll need instrument.new. Um, anonymous attendee says, does the session start one hour prior? No, it doesn't start one hour prior. Uh, the reason it's different time is because um, of daylight savings time. So the class is at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, I think I mentioned that last week. But um, so from now on, the class, whatever time the class started today, which was uh, two hours prior to right now, um, that's the time that the class will start for the rest of the class. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for your time. And uh, for those of you that are, that are st still around, I'll see you tomorrow. Right.